Okay, this video is for Sklaw, Sklawl21. You want some advice on playing right wing, you're a right footer, and you're looking for some current players to watch. Um, it's always good, it's always good watching pros play uh, because you could start to see their decision making, but e even, if, even if you have great soccer IQ, if you're not getting touches on the ball and you're not in, in good, you don't have good athleticism, even with the best IQ, it's hard to perform at a high level. So if you can only choose between watching high levels play or, 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 or training at a, doing smart training, effortless, smart and fun training, I guess both is, both is ideal, but I think you wanna focus on getting touches, right? Because if your touch is poor, then you know, you're never gonna succeed at a level that you're trying to play, play at. Um, and plus you could have two different team. You could have, you, your, your team could be playing the same formation as a professional team, yet because of the nuances of the nuances of your, of the people who are playing the certain positions, you could have the same formation that plays completely different, right? Because you could have, a you know, let's say you're playing, you know, Two, two different teams, the team you're watching is playing 4-3-3 three, three, and your team's playing 4-3-3. Three, three. But, y you know, just because of how certain roles are fulfilled and the player and players are strong and weak in different areas, the two teams could play the same formation completely differently. So, you know, I, I don't think that you want to rely on, on, on watching. Uh, uh, you want to you do smart training, right? Smart training is the key is the key to uh, is the key to succeeding at the highest level and and just having more fun, right? So there are some there are some things that I think you should check out um, that are really going to help you um, take your game to the next level. The first is assuming you're a winger, and and you know midfielders in general usually have the most get the most mileage, right? Are running the most. So something that I wish someone would have told me a long time ago was to check out the video. It's called how to breathe by Dr. Vranich, V-R-A-N-I-C-H. And this is gonna help you um, learn to breathe. And you say, oh, well, you know, I know how to breathe. You know, I'm all set. Well, if you do this test right now, as I speak, if you go, if you just take a deep breath, all right, so take a deep breath right now. And after you took that deep breath, if your shoulders moved up at all, if your upper back and shoulders move up, then you haven't been taught technically how to breathe. So you wanna check out her video, How to Breathe, it's a TED Talk, um, and it's you know it's completely changed my life, and it's gonna change your life on and off the field, just in high pressure situations. Um, anytime you're getting into a high, high, high stress or um, high stress situations, it's gonna help with those too. So I think it's a good life skill, not just soccer skill. The next three things I wanna show you, right, if you think about, the things to the things to know as a winger, the things to know as a winger is, are, are more fundamental, right? Whenever your team is attacking, you kind of want to spread out, and open up passing and dribbling lanes, and then when you're defending, you want to condense, compress, sh and shift shift towards your own goal, and you want to compress and condense passing and dribbling lanes. So that's just a fundamental of of, of movement and space of teams. Um, the second thing is. Even if you're attacking, and let's say your team has the ball on the left wing, the chances that you're going to get a ball from the left winger and he's going to hit you, he's going to hit you in the air, or even a driven ball on the ground on the complete opposite side of the field are very low. So you kind of want to tuck in, you kind of want to pinch, move towards the center of the field just a little bit, not enough so. You, not enough to, to where you're crowding the center midfield, but enough to where you could be more responsive, more responsive to the play. Because let's say the ball's in the left wing and your team loses the ball, then you have to start to track back so that if, you know, worst case scenario, it, if they start to penetrate towards the 18 that you're covering, you know, maybe you're helping cover center midfielders, something like that. Like, you, you know, you gotta be prepared to defend, but also prepared to, pop out right if the ball if your balls if you have the ball at the left wing and it starts to slide the ball starts to slide into the center midfield okay then maybe you want to start to get on that touch line and become an option either penetrating for through balls you know 
balls behind the defense around the corner, right around the last defender, or just an option out wide. So it kind of depends, you know, how, how your team likes to attack and defend. Um, some coaches can tell you what your formation looks like attacking and what your formation it looks like defending. Some coaches can. So this is actually a decent test to see, you know, your coach's awareness of what his team for because some coaches they'll say oh uh, you know this is our formation but to to go deeper the better coach is going to say okay this is what our formation looks like attacking and this is what our formation looks like defending so that's a simple question of a coach to to find out their prowess and and how knowledgeable they are with their their formations um so now let's talk about technical training right what does each player what is if you're what do each every single soccer player have to do well right just think about it Every soccer player has to know how to juggle, dribble, passing, and shooting, right? Those are the big three. So the, some of the things that can really, really take your game to the next level. We talk about this a lot. A kick trainer, right? AC Milan uses this. Um, West, Wesley Schneider uses this, I think, over at uh, Ajax or Ajax, whatever. Um, it's just a simple tool to help develop both your feet. So if you're not already using one of these, you got to invest in one of these. This is 24 bucks on Amazon. It's cheap, it's portable, it's lightweight. There's a more expensive option called a sense ball, which is good. It's, I mean, it's good, but I think I'd rather spend the cheaper one, test it out. If you don't like it, you could return it or, you know, just use it as a dog to toy or something. Um, but I just love how it can help you with your striking ability, right? It helps with timing, it's awareness, right? I'm looking around, I'm breathing. <sighs> you start to see the field and I've noticed that after I started using this ball, I could start to do stuff, like I was able to do stuff in training that I hadn't even thought about doing. Like even this move back here, I didn't really think, like I watched people doing it in videos and I thought to myself, well, it feels, it feels good, but I, I never see myself using this until there was a scenario when I did this without even thinking about it and my, my pass was on the money. Right, so it's just gonna unlock. It's gonna unlock some potential in your playing that I that I can't recommend enough. Right, you could play music with it. You could sing sing a song with it. Right, just kind of working that mind body connection. Breathing, always breathing. So this is something. Anytime you're walking, let's say you're watching TV or you're watching some soccer or you're even let's say you're on the bench. Right, two 45 minute halves. You could get thousands and thousands of touches in 90 minutes of watching a game on the sideline. And I think that's a, you know, um, that's an opportunity that most, most coaches don't really take advantage of. So this is an invaluable tool that I think every player should use. The second thing is um, juggling and dribbling, right? Juggling is the one thing that's gonna help you. Um, not all the best jugglers are the best players, but all, all the best players are the best jugglers. So you wanna um, invest even a few minutes a day into juggling. And here's a game that you could play with your friends or family, picnics, barbecues. Um, it's called the barrel game. You just take a ball. And if you, let's say, you, even if you're not that good at juggling, you, this is what you wanna start to do. With a bounce, you go. Right, so ideally, right, get it in the barrel. So you could do that with the right foot, then you switch to the left foot. Okay, so then you do both feet alternating. And then as you start to get better, then you can start to remove the touch, right? So then you go right foot. Then left foot, both feet alternating. Okay. Yes, please. Soft oil? Whatever you like. Oh, you can talk flat. Perfect. You want to? Yes, please. Then you could go right thigh, either with a bounce or without a bounce. Left thigh, with or without a bounce. Both thighs alternating, with or without a bounce. And then you finish with anything you want without a bounce combination. Right? Combination of, well, let me demo.
combination of anything you want with or without a bounce and changing the size of balls is going to help your your training trajectory right it's going to make it um whenever you drop the ball switch it out or you you know you could catch on the bounce but using tennis balls heavier balls even an american football dog toys just have fun with it right have 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 more fun the last thing i want to leave you with is this dribbling sequence i learned as a youth that's really served me quite tremendously and not a lot of people know about it well because this person's training is online and it's from 27 years ago and it goes this is called the tom turnbull dribbling sequence it goes with one foot you go outside outside inside outside inside then you switch foot outside outside inside outside inside outside outside inside outside inside you want to drill this over and over and over and over and over again and the reason it's so powerful is because since it's easy to say it's easy to memorize which means it's easy to execute slow is smooth smooth is fast slow is smooth smooth is fast outside outside inside outside inside say it out loud when you're doing it outside outside inside outside inside look at my arms outside outside inside outside inside the reason why it's the second reason why it's super powerful is because it works as a connector with all, all the other moves. So you'll start to go outside, outside, inside, outside, scissor, outside, outside, inside, outside, chop. Right, so it's a, it's a foundation for dribbling that's just gonna take your dribbling practice to the next level, right? If you check out on Instagram, Fanta Sista Mickey, F-A-N-T-A-S-I-S-T-A Mickey, M-I-C-K-E-Y, this like this little kid, he's this he's like a dribbling master. So I started replicating some of his moves, but I'll combine them with this dribbling sequence. Or you could check out Cover's ball skills mastery. It's like Cover skills mastery. He's got a long track record of ball skills and drills mastery. Anytime you work on the fundamentals, right? If you learn one ball skills mastery move a day or a week or a month even, um, anytime you're working on the fundamentals few minutes a day you can have more fun right fundamentals more fun so um, and if they say things in the brain right neurons in the brain things that fire together wire together so let's say you had you have you could either choose to do you basically want to practice dribbling juggling and ball striking passing and shooting all at the same time right instead of it's like let's say you had three 15 minute windows in your day instead of doing 15 minutes of juggling like in the morning 15 minutes of juggling in the afternoon or, or I'm sorry 15 minutes of dribbling in the afternoon and then like in the evening you have 15 minutes of ball striking I would set it up where in the morning I'm doing five minutes juggling five minutes dribbling five minutes ball striking and then in the afternoon it's five minutes juggling five minutes dribbling five minutes ball striking right because all these neurons that you're going to be on the field playing with right in soccer you got to do everything right you got to you got to juggle you got to take the ball down you're dribbling and then you're going to shoot it so it's almost like a more harmonious a more elegant training training style so the way you train is the way you play right so you got to practice all at the same time or else it might be a little disconnected but who knows um reach out with any questions and uh thanks thanks for watching all right thank you